Hey what is up everybody, welcome back to my channel and if you are here for the first time, consider subscribing for learning more about web development and activate your bell notifications so when I upload a new video you will get notified. So in the last video we have made an introduction to Angular and installed our first project using the Angular CLI. Check it out first if you haven't watched it yet. And in this video we are going to dive in the file structure of our project. After that we will see what a component is and how to create and use a new Angular component. If you are ready, let's get started. Alright, so what is a component? Components are the most basic building blocks of an Angular application. We can create a component once, but we can use them many times as we need in different parts of a project. An Angular component is made of three parts. The template file, which is the HTML, the TypeScript file, which is the model, and the styling file, which is the CSS. But why do we use components? Let's take the Free Code Camp website as an example and suppose that we build it with Angular. If we build it with Angular, we can develop the site from components, for example, firstly, the bigger parts, which are represented in red, and then the smaller parts, which are represented in orange, which will be all reusable independent code blocks, in other words, components. You're gonna understand better what I mean once we develop our own components later, so keep watching the video till the end. The component architecture is a much simpler approach than developing a website in larger HTML files with many lines of code. Using the component model makes the code much easier to maintain. Now let's go back to our project folder and create our first Angular component. Before we start creating our first component, let's quickly have a look at the file structure here. So here on the left side, currently you see all of the files of the project, but mostly we're gonna work under the source folder here. This one is for end-to-end -end testing, is a more advanced stuff, we don't get into this. Node modules is the folder that includes all the external packages coming with npm. When we install something with npm, it goes here. We also not gonna work inside this one. Next comes the source folder, and this is the one we are going to use a lot. I'll come back here soon. And these ones are mostly the configuration related files. We also are not gonna work here. Okay, now let's see what's inside the source folder. This one is the app folder where our main component is and inside are the related component files. I will get back here soon. The next important file here is the index.html. This is our main HTML file and all of the app is running under the app root component here. Now you might ask here, how is that possible? We can think of the component model like a tree structure and the app root component is the head of the tree. And later we can add and use additional components which will be the children of this app root component. And I will show how to do that very soon. Next comes the main.ts. By the way, all the TS extensions are for TypeScript. Normally we use JS for JavaScript, but we use TypeScript in Angular, so all of the extensions are named as .ts, not JS. The main.ts file is the file where our app module, our project, starts running. As you can see, it's bootstrapping the module, the app module here. Actually, we don't need to do anything here. It's just for understanding how the project works. And here is the global styles file. We can define our global SCSS rules. They won't be component based, but we can use them globally in our project. And this one is for testing. We also won't get into this. Okay, now let's get into the app component. This is the first component example you currently see. It has its own TypeScript, HTML and CSS files. I will explain routing later in this course. We also won't dive into testing. So let's see what's inside here, the main TypeScript file of the component. Okay, so this is the app component, which is actually a class, but works as a component for Angular. There is a component decorator here. You see, this might be confusing for beginners, so let's make this clear. The component decorator includes metadata and tells Angular that this class is a component. To define the component decorator, it must be imported first and these are the attributes of it. The selector is the name of the HTML component. Later we call the component with this name here, like you can see, it's called with the same name here. The template URL is the file path of its HTML file, which is this one. And the style URLs 
are the SCSS files. A component can have multiple styling files but only one single template. So we can add later if you like additional styling URLs here under this array. This is basically what an Angular component looks like. Now let's see how to create our own Angular component. When we create a new component, normally we would add all these files and the rules here manually, but thanks to the Angular CLI, we can create a new component with a single command only. So I am opening a new tab, navigating into our app folder. Now under the app folder, I want to create a new component. And to do that, I need to type ng g generate for short and c component for short. Then the component name first for example and this command creates a new component and does everything automatically for us and then we can start working with it so let's see okay now our component is created here under the first folder and when we navigate into it we can see that everything is ready there's also one more important thing when we see the app.module file we see that the first component our new component is here imported and declared under the ng module so the app module is used for when we create a new component or a module then it should be registered under the app module so we can start using it this is also an important part that you should, you should know with app.module okay so i go back to our first component now what i would like to show here is the string interpolation for example let's delete this I can create here an example tag inside an h1 tag, but I want to render it dynamically. To do that, we need to use string interpolation, which basically takes a variable, an array or an object inside the curly braces, like this. And here we define our variable name, text, for example. And the variable is declared inside the class. This should be a string and it should include my first component is ready. And when we run it, we would like to see this text directly here as the string interpolation. So let's see. We cannot see it here because we haven't called the component yet. So what we need to do is to call our component with this selector name, app first. So let's do that. I'm going to our app, our app root component and here inside the root component i am typing app first and now we should be able to see our text so let's see okay now as we can see our text is rendered here dynamically with the string interpolation method this is a very nice method in angular that we can use and as we can see our new component renders the new text here later in this course i will also explain what this router outlet does here so this is how we can create a component with the cli and use it later by calling its selector name under another component if you find this video useful please hit the like button in the next video you are going to learn about angular directives and pipes stay tuned on this channel and thank you guys for watching